All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back. Welcome back to another networking video. Right now, we're going to start a series on free PBX and some clients and a build inside VMs. And so we'll do a couple of these and we'll do the build slowly. And so hopefully we'll see all the parts. Okay, so here we go. Free PBX, SIP, and some clients. So, of course, the first thing that we have to remember is that we do have a a SIP infrastructure, or we're talking about a SIP infrastructure. And for that, uh, we need a couple of things. So the protocols that we're going to be using here is, of course, SIP, which is the session initiation protocol, and that is uh, standardized in RFC 3261. And SIP, if we're going to classify it sort of in a nutshell, it is a signaling protocol. Now, SIP can use TCP or UDP, uh, and if I recall correctly, the default free PBX or asterisk install uses a UDP. But as a signaling protocol, sometimes we want to specify TCP, but you can use either one. Now, the other protocol out there is RTP and its companion RTCP. And RTP is the real-time transport protocol, and that's what we actually use to send the audio and video across the link. So we're not going to use SIP for that. We're going to drop to RTP. All of the parameters for RTP are negotiated using SIP. Now, of course, we need a network infrastructure. And so we're going to use a VM for this particular demonstration. But in the real world, right, you would have your server connected to, you know, whatever architecture you have, whatever switch. And uh, if you're doing phones, right, desktop phones, then you might use uh, PoE instead of power injectors. Now, we'll probably do a demo with, with both. For these, uh, to get us started anyway, we use a couple of soft clients in virtual machines and we'll really just watch the packet capture. Now, when you've got the clients, that's the user agent client, and then the SIP server will be the user agent server. And I've already done a lot of stuff on voice over IP on the channel, so I'll put a whole bunch of links in the, in the notes. Now, as I said, uh, we're using free PBX as our SIP server, and we uh, can thank our friends at Sangoma and Asterisk for that. Now, they have lots and lots of videos out there. So this is not meant to be a tutorial on all things Asterisk or all things free PBX. We're just going to do a build, and we're going to look at the captures, and we're going to understand a little bit more about how things go together and the things that are necessary. Now, PBX is a private branch exchange, and that hails from the era of, you know, DTMF and plain old telephone system and things like that. But it is the thing that we're going to use to connect our clients. So the phones or the soft clients will connect to the PBX, in this case, free PBX, and we'll be using SIP as a signaling protocol, much in the same way that we would have used the very traditional ITUT uh, recommendations instead. And again, we're going to use uh, VMs for all of this. So today when we get to the demo part, I've got a bunch of uh, VMs that are running and we'll flop back and forth between them. And our clients are going to be VinPhone and uh, Cisco 7961 hard phone. So here is what we get after we do the install. So right now I'm just going to pop over there and we'll show you exactly what that means. In a real VM. So here is our free PBX uh, VM, and I'll just log in here. Now, when you do the install, when you bring down the ISO, uh, the ISO is uh, a single shot install. It does the Linux uh, operating system, and then it also does all the stuff that you need for free PBX. And so you don't have to do, you know, some kind of package manager at all. And when you do the build, right, there'll be a root password. So that's what I'm going to use here. All right, and this is where we where we wind up. Now, once we have this up and running, and we can see that I've got an IP address right there. Now, that IP address is going to be the management interface that I use, and I'll be browsing to that from someplace else. Now, there is a command line console. You can use the asterisk CLI, and in some cases, we'll see later on, sometimes you got to do some stuff here. But once your build is set up and you have all the modules installed and updated, this is pretty much all you're going to need right here. And what you'll do is browse to it. 
So maybe we'll show you that right now. So here is another VM. It's an Ubuntu VM, Ubuntu 22. And I am just going to put the URL for my server. Oops. In here. There we go. All right. So I'm at 99. You probably saw that or remember that from the, the previous VM. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter here. And we'll wait for this to load. All right, so here we are at the dashboard. This is how mine currently loads. Now, I've done a considerable amount of work to, to get to this point, but this is the dashboard that sort of shows everything that's going on here. And you can see I don't have a whole lot of issues at this point, no warnings found. You know, there's a, there's a couple here that are notifications. By the way, the nice thing about this interface is that you can drag around the various panels, but here is the the general dashboard that you're going to use but or that you can look at to get an idea of what's going on but of course we're going to actually use these tools here uh, later on now initially in the setup you're going to wind up with this screen here when you first browse you're going to wind up with this and this is all of your contact information and then you put that in the, the system will begin to start install you know modules and things like that then you'll also be presented with a um, an activation page now to start with um, you might wind up with this interface here the administration or the the control panels that you saw earlier were after clicking on the free pbx administration okay now the thing that i already went through in all of this was that i did the an attempt to activate and then an update what i ended up doing was going through the update process because I couldn't activate it until I got it all updated and now I'm behind some networking barriers that prevent my activation but that's another story for right now what I'll just say is that when you start to do your install you're going to wind up with a couple of different flavors and the two that jump to mind are a standard install and a commercial install if we're talking about a standard install there'll be all these modules that you have to use and so you'll be asked to update the modules and some of them will work just fine and then some of them will fail and so you'll need to maybe use the console to fix some of those that's the command line on the free pbx side but the web interface sort of tells you everything that you need to know so that's very handy and here is an example so this is the screen that indicates the kind of build that i was trying to do so i was doing a standard and in the standard there are actually some commercial modules that are installed as well but these are free to use so it's no big no big deal uh, some of them are needed for some of the functionality but basically what will happen is you'll you'll be presented with a screen with all of your modules that are installed and you know you'll have a dozen or so that might say you're disabled pending an upgrade so you just click that and then you'll go to what's called processing you'll, you'll click the process button so once you select all of your upgrades or um, fixes, you'll do processes and it'll do them all at once. Some will fail and then, so you'll do it again, but that's how it works. So this isn't just an example that I put on here, a couple of disabled here, right? And this one is an example of the user control panel that had to be updated. So I updated that one and it says, are you sure you want to do that? Sure. And after you pro you click process and then it asks you if you're sure you want to do all that stuff. And then off you go a couple of times through and you get your system all up and ready to go and ready to configure your clients. Now you can see that my dashboard <laughs> had a, a couple of critical errors. Now some of these are just missing emails, uh, addresses that I should put in there and things like that. But then eventually you'll wind up with a dashboard, which is of course what we've uh, already seen. Now this little button over here, I'm going to mention it now, I'll probably mention it again. This is really important. When you are making changes to the system, don't forget to apply your config. Otherwise, you'll go back and your changes will not have been made. So it's not enough to just make a change. You've got to apply that config to the asterisk uh, configuration. All right, let's take a look at these that actually at an online or are working VM. Now just as a reminder, uh, I have a 2.99, that's my server, and this node here is 2.7. Okay, so that's just my topology right now. So this is my management box. It's not one of my clients yet, 
and it is uh, talking to 2.99. So now if I wanted to update the system, I would do the system admin tools, right? And this is where I would this is where I would update, you know, the kind of system. There's my activation. But really for the VoIP stuff, what we're going to do is we're going to do extensions. Now, I've already got a couple of extensions here. We've got uh, Adama, Apollo, and Boomer. And I've given them some extension names. And these are all SIP clients. So you can either do that with this here, right, or with this window that constantly sticks its in, in front of your face right here. But it's the same thing. If I go to add an extension, you'll just go through and give the the details on your extension and so there's two parts to the SIP config one is the extension which is pretty straightforward right a username this is actually the number so I would put in here 475 my next extension would be like that and then I would pick you know whatever my, I want my username to be and then a secret if I wanted one right usually a good idea to, to do a secret these are pretty complex as you can see I usually tie that to the username and the phone number. But the other thing that you're going to do here is you can see that under settings, we have asterisk SIP settings. Now to get on your feet, there's not a whole lot that you have to do here. There are some, you know, there's a basic setup. It'll work if your clients are set up to communicate like the server is. I will say that there was one change that I did. Well, we'll just go through this real quick. So, you know, you're going to set your server addressing. This is all default here. What are these? These are codecs. So this is G.711, G.711, GSM, G.726, G.722. So these are all ITUT codec standards, except for GSM. Okay, now the other thing that we're going to look at is this, the, so these are general SIP settings, and those are specific, and the only real change that I made was ensuring that TCP was enabled right here, because my clients by default want to use TCP. If you don't do this, then your TCP connections will be denied, and that is pretty much it for the SIP configuration and the extension. You could submit. And then, of course, we uh, check to make sure that apply config is here, but the submit should get you done on this page. So I think that takes care of our SIP settings and our TCP warning, at least for right now, and our new extensions. And again, there's not much that you have to do on the new extensions. You're just going to, you know, give a, a phone number and a username and then maybe a, a secret. And that, that does it for a basic configuration. Now, this is after you've done a submit. This is back on the extensions page. So there's that apply config again. Now, if everything works, what you should see when you set up your client is that you've got a TCP handshake, right? So again, in my case, the Lin phone client wants to do a TCP connection. So here is my SYN, SYNAC, ACK, the TCP handshake. And then look right there. We've got a SIP register message to my server and 5060. Now 5060 is the SIP port number that's being used. And then an acknowledgement back from the server. So let's take a quick look at my client VM. Now I haven't finished the full configuration yet, but I just want to give you a quick look. I'm using the Lin phone here. Here's my handset, the number pad, and there is the SIP server. I haven't finished the full configuration, but this is what the Lin phone looks like. And we can see capturing on this particular particular phone or on the VM that's holding the phone, we can see that initially we are resetting until I allowed TCP connections. And the minute I did that, we get our TCP handshake followed by the register. And I think that'll about do it for this video. We're getting a little long. So this has been our first foray into getting back to SIP, right? This is the IETF RFC 3261. So don't forget that uh, we've got our protocols and our operation 
that's the same. And all that we're going to fight our way through is the free PBX build and then a configuration of our phone clients. And then later on, we'll do some, some Cisco phones. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I help. And may those SIP packets always reach their destinations, whether you're coming from the server or the client.